Hello and greetings to all of you, dear friends and viewers. Welcome. Today we are here with the continuation of a beautiful myth and narrative. A myth that we have seen together before. But today we are accompanying by the continuation of this beautiful story. The myth of the Titan. A divine myth and the continuation of the legendary battle of the Titans. So, stay with us to hear the continuation of this beautiful myth. After many long years since the escape of the beautiful Aphrodite to the deserts of the lost souls and the birth of her son with much suffering and pain and his rescue by the people of the Temple of Pandora, time has passed. Typhoon, the devilish star, has been searching for Aphrodite for years but still hasn't found her. Years have passed, and now Aphrodite has raised her son, Theodore, in the hidden and secluded temple of the great Pandora. Theodore, now a strong, powerful, and benevolent young man, with a heart full of love and goodness, is always hoping the people of Pandora and his mother. Theodore is a very strong and brave young man, always venturing outside the temple to find food and provisions for the hungry residents. Besides his mother, he now has a large family in Pandora. Pandora, like a mother to him, remains in the temple, while Hephaestus, like a father, remains. His mother and the temple residents are all his family, and Theodore takes good care of them. However, fate always has its hands on him. His mother, Aphrodite, lies ill in bed, severely sick and no medicine or magic seems to cure her. For this reason, Theodore becomes deeply saddened and distressed. Hephaestus addresses Theodore, saying, My child, do not be sad. Your sadness does not heal pain. We must seek a solution. Theodore replies, Father, what solution is there? I have explored all the valleys of the lost souls, talk to all the wizards and sorcerers, yet no remedy has been found. What should we do? Hephaestus tells him, there is only one place we haven't visited, the city of the infernal, Delphi. There things are found that exist nowhere else in the world. We can go to Delphi and find the antidote. Theodore said, So this is our last chance. At that moment, Pandora arrived and said, This is not right at all, and it's very dangerous. Hephaestus, don't force Theodore into this. He has great value and shouldn't go to such a prelious place. He's still young and hasn't fully harnessed his powers. Theodore interrupts her saying, Pandora, I understand your concern, but I won't let my mother die so easily. She has suffered and endured so much because of me. I have to save her life. It's the only thing I can do. Then he heads out of the temple. Hephaestus turns to his daughter and says, My daughter, Pandora, he's right. You must confront that devil face to face. He must go to battle against him one day and save the world once again. 
It's the only way to defeat Typhon. So, let him do what is right. Pandora says to her father, It's true that he must eventually confirm that devil, but the battle requires powers that Theodor doesn't possess. So, don't throw him into the jaws of death. As the darkness falls, Theodor is made of his mind to journey to Delphi under the cover of night. He quietly makes his way up to his mother's beside, where she lies asleep in her sickbed. He bids her farewell, whispering, Mother, I will save you and I will free the poor people from this torment. Have faith. With this mention in his heart, he sets off towards the accursed city of Delphi. He travels the long distance, encountering many demons along the way. He faces them all with courage and manages to overcome each one. Finally, he arrives at the port of the cursed city of Delphi. There, he encounters an old demon and asks him if there is a potion that can defy death. The old demon chuckles and says, Young fool, nothing can stop death. However, you may find the remedy in the palace of the Devil Titan. That might be of use to you. Theodore asks, Who's the Devil Titan? The old demon replies, He rules over Delphi. He is a fiery titan, deeply diabolical and cunning. If you accomplish what he desires, perhaps he will kill you, and you can request a potion from him. Tudor asks, where can I find him? The old demon points to the end of the city, the highest point, and says, his palace is there. Theodore makes his way towards the palace of the titan and is confronted by the giant guards of the palace. They refuse him entry, but Theodore informs them that he comes with a great present for the ruler. Reluctantly, they grant him access. As Theodore enters the palace, he sees the mighty titan seated on his throne, exuding a demonic and fiery aura. Surrounded by demonic woman, Theodore, feeling intimidated, suddenly finds himself kneeling as the guards force him down, instructing him to show reverence. Theodore bows his head in obsessence to the Titan. The Titan glanced at Theodore and said, What offering have you, a lowly creature, brought for me? Throw it here. If it's not worthy, I will kill you on the spot. Thudor, whose intention from the beginning was to obtain the antidote from the Titan, addressed him, saying, My lord, this offering is a powerful and luminous potion. I ask for your permission to approach closer and place this offering into your hands. The fiery titan lost in revelry, chuckled and said, Reckless human being, come. Thudur approached the feet of the titan and said, My lord, I only request one thing from you. I have heard that a magical power resides in your hands, one that can bestow immortality. In exchange for my offering, I ask for this magic from you, and I'm willing to do anything for you in return." The fiery titan chuckled and said, You filthy creature, what use could you have for such power? Though it might be benefit, there is no such magic at play here. The magic that can grant immortality resides within me. My fire can bring death back to life. Upon hearing this, 
Theodore swiftly drew a radiant sword from his scabbard and with a swift motion severed the titan's head from his body, trapping the titan's fire in a pouch. Theodore's initial intent was to kill the titan, unaware of how to find the magic of life. Theodore engaged in a fierce battle with the guardian demons, swiftly dispatching them and hazardly exited the place. He made his way towards the port of Delphi to escape the city, but all the guards were on his tail. Suddenly, a colossal and powerful titan appeared before him, blocking his path. The titan spoke to him, saying, You cannot go anywhere, and delivered a heavy blow to Thudur, rendering him unconscious. They took Theodore underground and imprisoned him. The powerful titan confiscated Theodore's belongings and headed towards the center of Greece, bringing them before the titan king, Typhon. Typhon, the legendary titan, was astonished when he saw the weapons and the sword that had been used by a human to slay a titan. He approached the sword, took a closer look, and exclaimed, Hephaestus, this cannot be possible. So, you finally come out. The sword was a weapon crafted by Hephaestus specifically to combat any creature for Thudu. Thus, Typhon realized the truth upon seeing the sword. Typhon wielded the weapon and used its power to locate the whereabouts of Hephaestus. After many long years, he discovered the location of the great temple of Pandora and how its enchantment could be broken. Typhon gathered his titan army and marched towards the temple. Upon finding the temple of Pandora, he launched an attack slaughtering all the innocent people and engaging in a great battle with Hephaestus. In the fierce battle, he severed Hephaestus' head from his body. Pandora, filled with grief and rage, attacked Typhoon with all her might, but was unable to do anything. She fell to ground, mortally wounded and passed away from her injuries. Typhon, amidst the destruction of the temple, found his wife Aphrodite, lying lifeless on a bed. He approached her and said, Aphrodite, after years of searching, I have finally found you here. I will take your essence with me and bring destruction to the world. Typhon then took Aphrodite with him and leveled the temple to the ground, turning it into dust. Thus, the legend continues. And so, the story does not end here. This beautiful myth continues. No one knows what fate awaits Theodore. The temple of Pandora lies in ruins. Hephaestus is dead, and Pandora's fate remains unknown. Is Pandora alive or not? Aphrodite has fallen into a deep sleep, and Typhoon continues his path of destruction. Thank you very much for accompanying us in this mythical narrative so far. This story is still ongoing, and if you enjoyed this myth, don't forget to like and subscribe. The more likes we receive, the sooner this saga will be continued. Please know that creating these stories requires a lot of effort and time, so your support is greatly appreciated. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments, and farewell until the next mythical tale.